right, today we've got a very special guest with us and uh, I'm going to be interviewing him. And uh, I think that this is something that I really don't want to do, but I think we all need to know exactly who he is. I'd like to introduce Satan himself. Well, I, I made it here. How can I help you? Yeah, I'm not really looking forward to this. I would like to say it's a pleasure to be here, but uh, then I'd be lot. Well, no, that's what I do. It's not a pleasure. How you doing? Well, this ought to be interesting. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to this, but I think that uh, I'd like to get to know you a little better and, and let our people know how you how you really work. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, well, that's one subject I love to talk about. That's myself. Uh, you see, I was a uh, I was an angel at one time. In fact, I have many titles, many names, but my my God-given name is Lucifer, Morning Star. I was bright, shiny. Kids would say I was blinged out. Had my own theme music. I walked around. I was musical. I was, you know, the number two guy up there. Yeah, I heard you was close to God one time. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, I kind of got a little envious. I kind of wanted his his power, his authority. I, you could say I had throne issues. I wanted my own kingdom, and it kind of got me in trouble. I kind of want to call your own shots. Uh, yeah, you could say that. But I, uh, again, we had our good times, we had our bad times, but uh, yeah, I couldn't have that. So, weren't you in the garden? Of course I was in the garden. That was my first trial on human beings. It was a little upsetting when he created those. Yeah, there's a lot of trickery there. Trickery? So simple. Just twist a couple verses of the Bible, twist a couple of and, and, and actually just play one against the other. It was two people and it was over a piece of fruit. It was an apple. You know how easy it is today? They don't even eat fruits and vegetables. The only thing they eat fruit-wise is an apple. So what do you think about the church? Hmm. Well, the creation of the church scared me at one time because what its intended purpose was, was to get rid of me and my, uh, my followers. But the way it's going now, not even a threat to me. So what kind of things do you see on the outside, kind of, uh, you see this going on in the church? <sighs> a lot of things going on in the church. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I do attend every now and then. Oh, you do? Uh, I, hey, what do they say? Friends close, enemies closer. And uh, I like what's going on. I love the division. I love the uh, thousands of different denominations. I love the this person saying this one, this person saying this, changing quotes, arguing about musical choices. It's the greatest thing ever. And they'll blame me for certain things, which I'm not even a part of, but guess what? Any press is good press. But people are really, they're, they're engaged to the church. Well, attendance at church is one thing, but actually following through, you know, I could sit and, and, and listen to somebody tell me something, but then I can still take it upon myself to think I'm in charge of everything. The me, me, me society is what's keeping me in business. You can come to church, you can sit there, you can clap with your friends and laugh, have a great time, but then when you get out in the parking lot, you're thinking, what can I do? What's in it for me? let this benefit me, it's, it's, it's wonderful. Pride, ego, self-centeredness, no-brainer. It's wonderful for my business. Anything else on the church? <sighs> I, I hate telling you my secrets or I hate telling you anything that would benefit the church, but if, if they would just understand, you go there to be fed, to learn, and then you take it all on your own. You, you, you create your own spiritual walk. You're there to lead, to be an example, but they're supposed to follow up. There's so many things to do to stay plugged in, to stay close to God. My job is for you not to, but if you're not doing it, my job is so easy. It, it's, it's so simple. All I have to do is be miserable for that hour where you're in church, knowing that when you get home, you're turning on the television, your child's going to his room to play on that little, oh, I mean that beautiful device called the cell phone, the internet, oh, made this world so much better for me. And then again, it takes you away from God. Sorry, but I would kill my distractions to get closer if I played for your side. 
But being that I don't, tell them to keep doing what they're doing. Seems to be working in so my favor. So you're saying people have a free will to choose. <sighs> but they knew that, didn't they? My, I made my choice. And my choice is kind of sealed in eternity. I, ca I can't turn back. I'm kind of what they say, non-redeemable. You guys still have a choice till the dying breath you have. But you keep playing around with choices and you don't make the right one, which is good for me. Again, it's great for me. So continue to be indecisive. So even you realize that Jesus died. Oh, whoa, whoa, so whoa, 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 oh, hold on. You don't like that word? You don't like that? That, that name? Jesus? Oh, my Lord. Okay, this is what we need to do. I agreed to make this interview with you, but you know my, my, my two weaknesses. Number one is that man, and number two is that Bible. And these are two weapons. I, we, we discussed this beforehand, right? I, I signed that little contract, and we made these decisions to, to, to respect each other. But you don't like when I say Jesus. I'm out of here. Jesus. Goodbye. Till next time. Where are you going? I'm not done yet.